Imagine turning arid soil that can only grow tumbleweeds and sagebrush into nutrient-rich soil that can grow crops for livestock. Imagine doing this without saturating the soil with chemicals. Now, imagine tons of treated primarily organic material from wastewater treatment plants being used to change the soil through its own nitrogen, phosphate, phosphorus, and other natural ingredients. Only thing is, this nutrient-rich material is miles away from the soil that needs the nutrients. And if it's not used to enrich soil for crops, this material just gets thrown into landfills. And finally, imagine that a large city purchased this arid land to enrich it with this beneficial material to grow corn, wheat, alfalfa, and other crops. Impossible? No, it really has happened and is still happening today. The city of Los Angeles owns a farm which is treated with primarily organic material called biosolids. Every day, about 640 tons of biosolids is trucked to the farm that is located just southwest of Bakersfield. Before biosolids were used to enrich the soil at this farm, the soil consisted mostly of sand, salts, and clay. Previous to biosolids being used on this farm, the former owners needed to add cow manure, sulfur, sulfuric acid, and other ingredients to make this soil able to grow crops. Then in 1994, a city contractor contacted the farm owners and asked them if they wanted to use biosolids to enrich their marginal soil so that it could grow crops. Faced with huge costs and debt in making this soil able to support crops, the owners agreed. Five years later, the city purchased the farm to ensure that biosolids would be able to benefit the soil for many years. But can you imagine city folks running a farm? Neither could the city officials. That's why the city made sure that people who worked on the farm had farm experience. So, is farming with biosolids any different from growing crops with soil that is naturally productive? Well, the answer is yes and no. The only differences are that as soon as biosolids are introduced into a field, you have to grow a crop. And once the crop is ready to harvest, you must take random plant tissue samples from that crop. These plant tissue samples are then sent to a state-certified laboratory where the plant tissue samples are analyzed to verify that the crop is healthy. Everything else that is done on the farm is exactly the same as on any other farm. After the crop is harvested, random soil samples are taken from the fields, regardless of whether biosolids are used. For many farmers, these soil samples are used to determine the level of nutrients in the soil. That's how the farmers know how to supplement the soil with the appropriate nutrients needed to grow their next crop. On the city farm, these soil samples are taken to determine how much nitrogen and other nutrients are still remaining in the soil. By knowing how much nitrogen is left in the soil and what crop will be grown next in those fields, the farm manager will know how many pounds of nitrogen-enriched biosolids can be applied to those fields. This is because different crops need different amounts of nitrogen in the soil before they are planted. Too much nitrogen, and the soil becomes toxic. Not enough nitrogen, and the crop won't develop a good harvest. Depending upon the crop, the farming methods may vary, as well as the amount of water that each crop needs to grow, and how much time it takes before a crop can be harvested. The only thing that is similar, no matter what crop is being grown, is the biosolids process. Seven days a week, 24 truckloads of biosolids arrive at the city farm. Each load weighs about 25 tons. These loads are unloaded at specific fields. During the unloading process, farm employees hose off the wheels and the interior and exterior of the truck's trailer. Afterwards, the driver goes back to Los Angeles for another biosolids load. As the truck pulls away from the field, farm employees start the process of spreading the biosolids over the field. This involves scooping up the biosolids with a skip loader and distributing the biosolids over the field. Next, a box spreader spreads and smooths out the biosolids over the ground, similar to a knife spreading peanut butter over an English muffin. 
After the biosolids have been spread, a tractor pulling a plow or discs incorporates the biosolids into the soil. By the end of the day, all the biosolids that have been sent to the farm have been incorporated with the soil, enriching it with nutrients and water so that it can grow crops. After a field has had biosolids incorporated into its soil, farmhands chisel or rip the soil with tractors. This process makes the soil loose so that another essential element, water, can seep into the soil and allow crops to grow. Farm crops use lots of water, especially in areas where the summer temperatures can go beyond 100 degrees. The main water source for the city farm is a water treatment plant operated by the city of Bakersfield. Each day, crops on the city farm are irrigated with about 14 million gallons of reclaimed water from the Bakersfield plant. But even this amount of water is not enough during the hot, dry summer. So it's necessary to pump water from wells located underneath the farm and buy extra water from outside sources. Any water that enters the farm stays on the farm. Water that is not absorbed by the soil is captured and stored in canals and tail ponds until it is used again to water the fields. This constant recycling ensures that the precious water does not escape the farm's premises and is constantly reused in a beneficial way. After a field has been chiseled, the farm manager will decide if there needs to be more disking or field preparation in order to plant a crop. How a field is prepared depends on the crop. If corn is going to be grown in that field, it must be pre-irrigated prior to planting the corn. However, all the other crops grown on the city farm, Sudan grass, wheat, mm -hmm. and alfalfa, do not necessarily need to be pre-irrigated. The next farming steps really depend on the crop. If it is corn, then part of the field needs to be raised into 30-inch wide mounds called furrows. When the corn seeds take root and start to grow, irrigation pipes must be brought in and laid in the rows that are between the furrows so that the field can be watered. In between the watering, while the corn is growing, the rows need to be weeded with a cultivator that tills the weeds and grasses into the soil. After about four months, the corn crop is sampled. If it has a doughy texture to it, it's ready to harvest. Now, if alfalfa, Sudan grass, or wheat is being grown in a field, the irrigation preparation process is different than corn. Special borders have to be put up before the field is planted to control the irrigation needed to water the crop. These borders are small two-foot berms spaced every hundred feet. So when the section is irrigated, the water is confined to that section of field until it's flooded. Once that section is flooded, the water then spills over the borders to the next section until the whole field is flooded with water. Although the irrigation preparation is the same for these three crops, alfalfa is different when it comes to the soil preparation. Prior to planting alfalfa, the soil is treated with plant herbicides to control the grasses and weeds. Also, sulfur and or gypsum may be added to further condition the soil for the crop. Once alfalfa is planted, no additional soil conditioning can be done for the next three to four years. After the alfalfa crop has been planted, it takes about 30 days before it is ready for its first harvest. Most farmers like to plant alfalfa because it is a moneymaker. Once they plant it, they can harvest this alfalfa field seven to nine times a year for about four years. However, only small sections of the city farm grow alfalfa because it ties up a field for a period of four years, and the city needs that land to incorporate the 640 tons of beneficial biosolids it sends to the farm each day. The last two types of crops that are grown on a regular basis on the city farm are Sudan grass and wheat. Sudan grass, which can be grown in marginal soil, uses a lot of nitrogen from the soil. Because of this, Sudan grass is generally grown as a beginning crop to help remove salts in the ground. It can be harvested up to three times after planting. After the third harvest, it must be taken out and another crop must be grown in that field. Wheat, on the other hand, uses less nitrogen and is considered a winter crop, which means it is planted in late October and early November. 
at about four months it reaches the dough stage which is when the wheat kernels actually have a doughy feel to them when you crush them with your fingers who decides when to harvest a crop and who pays for the harvesting well that would be the customer who agreed to buy the crop before it was even planted since it is the customers crop farm personnel check the crop regularly and let the customer know when it is approaching the harvesting stage just before the crop is harvested random plant tissue samples are taken from the crop and sent to the lab after the harvest random soil samples are taken then the whole process of growing a crop starts over who are these customers who buy and make decisions about these crops grown on the city farm the local dairies that is because the city only sells its crops to customers who will use it to feed their livestock although selling these crops to the local dairies means income for the city the main reason the city of los angeles purchased the farm was to make sure that there was a place that could use enriched biosolids in a productive manner instead of just placing them in a landfill but some people still question whether using biosolids is safe the answer is yes before they leave the treatment plants they are sampled for heavy metals at the current rate the city can apply its biosolids at the current metal levels to the farm for at least 50 years also any biosolids and reclaimed water used on the farm cannot reach the local groundwater aquifers since they're about 350 feet below the surface that's 35 stories beneath the surface of the earth there will always be skeptics who question the use of biosolids just like there were skeptics who didn't believe that people could fly until the Wright brothers proved them wrong all it takes is imagination and someone or some city like the city of Los Angeles with determination to make that imagined vision into reality proving the skeptics wrong